Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Marketed Not Live, the show that provides you with all the answers from your fellow speakers, fellow attendees, wannabe attendees, basically anyone that's, that's listening. Of course, this is all about Marketed Live, the event which is taking place in Nottingham Contemporary on Tuesday, the 25th of September. And when you're listening to this, it's literally less than two weeks away. So if you haven't still got your ticket, you are really cutting it fine now. You need to get on and do it because there's not much time left. And actually, there's actually not that much space, so you better hurry up and do it. Now, this show is sponsored by Podcast Websites, the world's leading platform for anyone who wants to get into audio marketing, anyone who wants to create a podcast, you really do need to go and look these guys up, guys up at podcastwebsites.com. Anyone who listens to this podcast or ticket holders to Marketed Live can go on to marketed.live and actually get a special offer where you can get membership of podcast websites for life at a discounted rate as long as you do that by the end of October this year. So why is that important? Well, we'll soon find out because I'm delighted to introduce to you a lady who's going to be speaking at Marketed Live this year, who knows a thing or two about podcasts, is from podcast websites. It's Hannah McCreesh. Hello, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. Um, thank you for um, be willing to share some of your knowledge with us. Let's start off by telling people uh, a little bit about you, who you are, and what your role is at podcast websites. And maybe if you could, please, a little bit more about podcast websites so that you can do it justice. Of course, of course. So uh, my name's Hannah, and I'm the head of content and partnerships at podcast websites. Um, I've been in the podcasting space for about four months now, and prior to that, I've kind of worked all around. I've done agency side, I've worked in the third sector, um, for Sheffield Children's Hospital, for a local disability charity. Um, so I've had quite a sort of broad range of marketing jobs, um, but I really wanted to specialize in the content marketing side of things because that's kind of where my strengths lie and what I really enjoy doing. So that led me into, into this role. Um, but as for what podcast websites do, so we are a turnkey solution for your audio platform. Um, and what that means is we provide you with a beautiful, responsive website for your podcast. Um, you've got all your downloads and stats in one place. You've got um, all your media hosting included, as well as 24-7 um, support and access to the Podcast Success Academy, which is a skills-based academy. Uh, it's on a completely separate website. And within that, you have every month we do expert workshops. We do uh, downloadable resources. We do courses. We do basically equipping you with all the skills that you wouldn't necessarily think you need to be a successful podcaster. So within that, that's how to market yourself, how to um, do good audio SEO, how to uh, brand your podcast. It's, it's literally full of everything you could ever possibly need. Um, and it's kind of such a strong aspect of what we do in its own right that we've recently launched it as its own standalone products and now people can sign up to the free tier um the paid growth tier as well um so that's really exciting news for us it's doing well so far got lots of new members <laughs> that's amazing now it sounds to me as though this is like the one-stop shop for anyone yeah. who's interested in hosting some kind of, of podcast when i think back to when we were considering doing a podcast for marketed live lots of things went through my mind such as you know is this going to be a complete time suck um, am I going to be any good? Is the audio going to be good? And those are sort of the questions that I thought of to begin with. But then as I started to learn a bit, I thought, well, I, well, I discovered that recording the podcast is probably the easy part. Creating the sort of 100%. conversation is the, is the easy part. No one told me anything about hosting or distributing and I had no clue. I, I, just, I had no clue how to get it on things like Apple podcasts or Stitcher or everywhere else. Um, what are the, what are the things that people seem to not understand or not realize that are so important to podcasting? I think people, so I come from a blogging background, um, and it's quite similar in the sense that when people just think one day, oh, you know, I like writing, I'm going to start a blog. But what people don't tell you is writing like with podcasting recording is the easy part. It's when you have to consider all the other things that you need to be good at. So you need to know not only how to write a blog, you need to know how to build a website for it. You need to know how to do good photography. You need to get a good logo. And um, you need to know how to promote yourself on social media and all the same things kind of arise when you have a podcast. So we have a lot of different members um, who are sort of in different stages of their podcasting journey, but everything that we do is built towards helping our members to become the audio influencer in their niche. So the John Lee Dumas of, you know, 
business entrepreneur podcast. Um, and we have people from all different backgrounds. We've got a Puerto Rican craft beer podcaster. Um, we've got a Vi Vikings, one of our most, I think one of our most downloaded members who's reached, I think, oh, don't quote me on this. I'm like putting, putting pressure on myself. I think he's done 50,000 downloads in three months. Um, and he does a Viking history podcast. Um, so to answer your question, I think people, people need help with the sort of development of their website and the branding, but they also need help with kind of, as you say, getting the podcast out there and um, knowing how to get it on Google Podcasts, how to get it on um, the Apple Podcasts app, how to get it out into the world, how to use other mediums to um, draw traffic to their website. So, you know, whether to have a blog or some people sell products so they can have like an e-commerce function on their site. And um, there's a lot, it's quite an intimidating sort of space to come into in some ways because there is so much to know and sometimes you just need an all-in-one platform that can you know hold your hand and help you through that um, to understand how to get from you know from a to b and how to build your podcast into a you know a profitable platform because that's fundamentally why a lot of people start a podcast because obviously they do want to monetize it and it wants to be more than a hobby and you know we've got people who have you know quit their day jobs and do that full time or people who just have you know a more profitable side income because you know you do have to invest quite a lot of time into it um and you know to make that worthwhile you kind of kind of need that help when we spoke to chris ma on a previous episode he was talking about objectives and how all content needs to have uh, an objective so what sort of objectives do you see your members actually have when they when they want to create a podcast is it all sales or is it is it is it something else i think i think you can in some ways put people into two categories so there's the people who do it because they have a hobby and they really love doing it so um we met like i met this amazing guy at um oh what's the conference called i'm panicking now because it's so hard podcast <laughs> movement that one? yes podcast movement <laughs> you know that thing that i went to for an yeah, entire yeah. week <laughs> um and he does a trivia podcast so like pub quiz trivia as a podcast and he did that purely because he it didn't exist and he enjoys doing it but now he's doing that full time so there's people who kind of go into it with the mindset i want to make money i want to monetize this and then there's people who do it as a hobby who don't actually realize the potential and that this can actually be you know a job for them so are we heading now into the realms of um podcast being like youtube where people are leaving their jobs then to, to go and do this full time and and is it what makes what makes them do that? Is it the same sorts of drivers like audience, like monetization? For sure, I think there are a lot of people now. I mean, podcasting is huge, and a lot of our client base are in America, and obviously, podcasting over there is is absolutely massive. We're a good number of years behind there in the UK. BBC recently announced that they're starting to do podcasting, and if anything, that kind of you know shows just how big it is getting. That a massive media platform like that would start to do it themselves. Um, so, I mean, stats wise, I mean, I've got some stats in my presentation that I've written down. We've got Apple say this year, they've got 525,000 active shows, um, with 178.5, I think that must be thousand <laughs> episodes worldwide. Um, so it is huge and there's a, it's really exciting for us in the UK because there's a massive growth opportunity there. Um, for people who want to start podcasts out of a hobby or people who want to start podcasts as personal branding or even, you know, as you guys have done, marketed live podcasts on behalf of your business or behalf, behalf of your podcast. It's a really, really exciting time. Um, and there's so much growth and development to still happen here. So what makes a good podcast then? Not this one, maybe, because we're still, you know, we're like, I think this is like episode 10, right? And uh, we would, we're definitely better now than what we were. So there is the whole practice thing, but I still think we've got a huge amount to learn. So what's, what's, what makes a good podcast in your opinion? I think you've got to have a good quality branding, a really good website. Um, you also need to have good, simple things like good audio, um, good audio quality. And I think as well, fundamentally, you have to have a good format and good guests. <laughs> So, I mean, having good guests is important because it, you know, it attracts people to the podcast, but you know, if you've got the good branding the good website, the good, um, audio quality and the good, um, format, it just shows that you take it seriously and you thought it through and it's not just, you know, some podcasts are very sort of unstructured and for some people that does work, but it just depends on what industry you're in. Um, 
people, you know, you need to add value to people's lives. If they're going to spend time listening to you, you know, everyone's incredibly busy. It's got to have some sort of benefit to them. And I think you've got to keep your listener sort of first and foremost in the front of your mind. We, um, we did a lot of content around having an audience avatar. So you need to think about, you know, who listens to my podcast, you know, how old are they? Where do they live? What do they enjoy doing? How, you know, what are they doing when they're listening to our podcast? And then that helps you to tailor all your episodes and all your content around that person and fundamentally make it more like personalized to them. So this, this makes me feel very much like there is such an affinity with marketing that it was first it was totally right to include podcasting in this year's marketed live um but but you know there's there's so many similarities between like you say this and blogging and general forms of content like say in terms of things like avatars and thinking about your audience first and what what they need and what what they deliver is it is it possible to gain efficiencies by doing lots of different formats but with the same type of content so from the podcast comes a blog or a blog comes the the podcast should they be the same should they definitely be different where's the line between what's basically a a rip-off of one format into another and original content for that particular format well it's it's interesting that you ask because every time I do a piece of content. It's not just a one-off, you know, podcast, a one-off blog post, a one-off resource. We do a content package. So everything that we do. um, So the other week we did a whole content package around how to land your first podcast sponsorship with Jessica Kupferman, um, who's the co-founder of She Podcast. She's huge in America. She's got a 10,000 women network of podcasters um, in a Facebook group. And she's very, very well known in the industry. And so I did a blog post um, that was like a feature of an interview that I did with her. So that was the original format. And then we do an alternative format for everything that we do because, you know, not everyone likes reading a long blog post. Not everyone likes watching videos. Not everyone likes listening to podcasts. So that way you can appeal to, you know, multiple different people with the same content type. So she basically uh, repurposed that feature into a little video that we embedded within the blog post and also, you know, sent out in our emails. Um, and then we always do a content upgrade, which is like a downloadable resource or something that helps people to action their learning. So I think for Jess's, we, um, we did an infographic. That was one of them. And then um, I did a full transcribe of the entire interview, which has a lot more tips and a lot more value in that. And those were all in the freeze here, the podcast success academy, so people can access those in their own time. So again, it sort of adds more value to the content that you're watching or you're listening to that, that helps people adapt or not adapt, but helps people almost sort of pick the, the format that, that they feel is most they relevant enjoy, to them. Yeah. They enjoy, and yeah. that's what's great about podcasting as well is that it's just so accessible and that's why it's so mm. popular because for me, I, I love reading, but you know, in, in a day I'm, I'm, I'm super, super busy. So I try and put aside, you know, 30 minutes a day of like industry-based um, and kind of skills-based reading. Um, but you know, it doesn't always happen because it's not, you know, it's, it's a nice to do, but it's not always the priority. However, with podcasting, I can listen to that on my commute to work. I can listen to it at the gym. You can listen to it at home. You can listen to it doing absolutely anything, which is brilliant. Whereas with videos, you have to, you know, sit time, spend time, sit and actually watch it. And same with blog posts, you know, they're, they're a bit more time consuming. Uh, but podcasting is great because it's just like your own personal radio show in your ears. And it's a much more sort of intimate way to connect with people because you are, you are literally talking to them. And if you get it right, if you get your avatar right, and if you get your content right, you know, people feel like you're speaking personally to them, which is kind of how they, how they should be feeling. Which, which podcast do you listen to? What, what are your favorite podcasts and, and why are they so good? So um, I listen to a podcast by um, a lifestyle blogging sort of duo um, called Keeping It Candid. And they, they talk about, um, I tend to listen to the more blogging ones that they do, but they do talk about lots of sort of random things that are sort of pop culture. Uh, but they did a really good one about, you know, how much they earn as they both blog full time. And it's just something that people don't speak about. It's a real um, kind of elephant in the room. And there's a lot of people don't know what to charge because no one speaks about it. And that was, that was brilliant because I think that was the most listened to podcast ever because it added so much value to people. Um, and it really opened my eyes in terms of that it is, you know, a viable career option for people because they earn a lot of money, but you know, they've got a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, etc. Um, but I listened to them. I also listened to, I listened, recently I listened to S Town. I binge listened to that over whilst I was working actually because there's certain things that I can do 
um, that I can listen to music or I can listen to podcasts doing. But if I'm doing like the kind of creative writing side, I have to just have no music at all. I can't listen to anything. I was just doing some admin stuff. Um, and yeah, I love Death Town. I thought it was really good. And again, Serial. I know these are like such typical ones because they're so well known, but I listened to the first, um, the first season of Serial. And I started with the second and I just didn't enjoy the second. But we are doing a third. It's been announced September 20th, I think. So I'm hoping that that's going to be good. I mean, those guys have got so much money behind them that everything they do is so well produced. The research is just incredible. So they, they do make for really captivating listening. But I'm keen to find a new uh, true crime podcast to listen to, I think, that's perhaps not as, not as well known. <laughs> Are they all US-based podcasts? Um, Keeping It Candid's UK. Okay. Because uh, those guys are UK bloggers. Um, but yeah, the other two are American. It's really interesting what you're saying about the UK being behind, because I mean, my experience says that that's generally the case for, for most formats anyway. How close do you think we are to the States? Oh, that's a big question. Um, I don't feel like I'm qualified to answer that, but <laughs> um, I'd say maybe three years. Okay. Perhaps. So, so, we've, got, so we've got some work to do, but then again, that's, that's the opportunity, right? That's the opportunity yeah, absolutely. That, that we've got. And, and I guess for our audience at Marketed Live, those people or businesses that are prepared to get involved and get stuck into this now, get competitive advantage over those people that maybe absolutely. are lagging behind or, or waiting for everybody else to, to jump in. Okay. And the cool. best thing is, you can, if you get in now, you have that time to establish yourself as a audio influencer and the leading person in the niche. Whereas in America, it's more difficult now because you know how many people have copied um, Johnny Dumas's format because obviously you know he's done so well with it, but it's not worked because they're not him and because they didn't yeah. get in early. Whereas now, if you get in early, you know you've got a much better. I'm kind of toying with, I, I really want to start a podcast because I can absolutely talk the hind leg off a donkey and it just seems like the right format for me, whereas I feel very awkward on video. Um, so I'm toying with a few ideas because there's, you know, there's lots of things that I have an interest in that I could do a podcast about, but it would, whether it would be the obvious choice, you know, like a lifestyle vlogging one or, you know, festivals and glitter or I don't know what else. There's a guy who does one and he reviews cheap wines from Aldi. And so and you're happy with that? Just, that sounds amazing because I love wine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And um, James Marriott, who's our head of uh, podcast relations and operations, has a Sheffield Craft Beer podcast. So lots of opportunity there. Okay, let me ask you some quick fire questions. So um, you, you've said that you've worked um, in, 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 in different areas before joining podcast websites. What's the, what's the weirdest campaign that you've ever had to work on? Um... I've not really worked on many weird campaigns. I've worked on some, so like I've got two examples of things that were really, really fun to work on. They weren't weird, but they were just like not your everyday sort of thing. So um, the first one is in my last job, I worked for a organization called Dimensions and we launched a huge campaign, like nationwide campaign that was aimed towards um, changing the legislation for disabled people who experience hate crime. Um, so that was massive. You know, we launched on the BBC Breakfast show. I, I took our CEO to Media City in Manchester. He was like, have you ever done this before? I was like, nope. <laughs> um, and it was surprisingly chilled out, actually. I also, um, on behalf of my blog, worked on a... Do you remember a couple of years ago on the centenary anniversary of the Battle of the Somme? They put soldiers in um, all the stations around yes, the UK. Yes, I do it was remember massive. So they contact the PR agency who were... Um, working on that contacted me before and I, I was under embargo I couldn't speak to anyone about it and I, it was good because I went to the station and all the press were there and they didn't know why they were there but I was like I know why I'm here <laughs> um, and I got some amazing amazing photos um, and did a blog post about that on the day so that was amazing as well so yeah not not really weird and wonderful but um so interesting <laughs> no, I mean, that was, that was a great campaign actually it was really outstanding mm. and I think the element of su surprise with that type of subject matter as well um obviously resonated really well with 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 people out there um okay now you're going to be speaking at marketed live this year we can't wait to have you down uh and and hear Excited. more detail about podcast is going to be brilliant um having looked at the list of speakers from from this year is there anyone that you're particularly looking forward to to seeing or hearing from so I have heard through the grapevine um that some of the speakers from last year are being re-invited back um, so I'm excited to speak to some of those and hear a bit from more of some of those. And 
I can't remember his name because I'm terrible with names, but I know there's a guy who um, is around my age who runs a Snapchat influencer platform, uh, which is like the first of its kind. So I'm definitely love to love to listen to him about that because it's a really interesting concept um, and one that I think definitely can do very well because Snapchat's huge. It's massive. It's, it's huge. such a and good way to communicate with people as well. It, it's still, I don't know, it's still kind of underrated. I mean, we don't do a lot mm. of it from, from my agency, but that's mainly because of the client base that, that we have. But yeah. um, Tim Armu, who's the chap you're referring to, I mean, he really, okay. <laughs> really, clever, really knows his stuff and um has has some really good opinions on like how the whole sort of like gen z thing is going and what they need and what that audience mm. needs that's different to uh to, to other audiences so it's gonna be yeah mm. really good to hear from him really looking forward to it oh uh, look okay um I, I can't honestly i literally i mean it's so busy here you wouldn't believe but um <laughs> I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks time down in fly by oh it will <laughs> 25th of September is the date that you need to have in your diary if you still haven't booked your, your tickets. Go to marketed.live. All the information on there uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, all the information that you need is on there. You can interact with our concierge bot, Mel. She slash he, because it's deliberately androgynous, um, <laughs> is, is, is there. Answer any question and that bot um, is, is training to be better asking questions or answering questions rather. So, uh, <laughs> most things are on there, where to stay, how to get the train, where to park, what to do on the night, what food there is, all this kind of, kind of stuff. If you really need any questions answering, just reach out to us, but it's a couple of weeks away. So we can't wait to see everybody then. Um, thank you, Hannah, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks to you for watching and listening to the podcast and we shall see you for the last one next week. Daddy.